What's up, boys? Data782 here with episode 7 of Fixing the Franchise here with the Anaheim Ducks. And wow, what a day it has been on the YouTube channel. If you've been following along on the subreddit and on my channel, you'll see that an old video of mine was blowing up and I posted an update video from Unregistered Hypercam 2 on Club Penguin earlier today. And it's just been a wild ride. Lots of new subscribers, so if you're here from that, welcome. Glad that you're uh, along for the ride. Thinking about updating some of the content that I post here, continuing my Anaheim Ducks series for sure here on NHL 20, but possibly uh, posting some videos with some other content, some nostalgia, other games. So leave a comment on what you would like to see from this channel because I'm just gonna pump out whatever people wanna see. For right now, it's NHL 20. Maybe some more Club Penguin commentaries, things like that. But whatever you want to see, let me know and I will make it happen. But for right now, we are in the 2021 NHL Entry Draft. In the last episode, we got knocked out of the playoffs in the first round by the San Jose Sharks. And then we lost the draft lottery, dropping from pick number three to pick number six. So in this episode, we are going to draft. We are going to do our contracts. We are going to do the offseason and set up for next year. Hopefully it'll be a bit quicker than the last time we did the off season. Hopefully it won't be a super long episode. So let's hop into the draft. So here in the draft, picking first are the Minnesota Wild. Big shout out to, let me get the name, but I had I had no idea what these targets meant on these uh, on the draft, on the on the teams for the draft. And I was mentioning in the last off season video that I had no idea what these targets were. I never figured it out. And then coming in, commenting on that video was my good friend now, Max Kids Brody. Shout out to him. Thank you for telling me. The target means that that team has their pick on the trading block. So now I know that Washington and Nashville both want to trade their picks, but LA and New York do not. So that's interesting. So looking at the draft class here, obviously number one is going to be Atu Ratti. Looks like number the top three are definitely set. It looks like one, two, and three from the scouts and from central scouting. And number four will most likely be Trevor Wong, who's a monster. He's a centerman in 70 games in WHL. He had 118 points. So I really wanted to draft him, but no chance he drops to six. There's a lot of centermen him here. And center is not a really a spot that I need. So if I'm not going to get Trevor Wong, if I just accept that, maybe I was looking at the other prospects, maybe I drop from six to seven or six to eight, pick up another pick and then draft Jesper Helmerson, who is a left wing two way forward from the SHL. He is A plus in shooting and puck skills. His strengths is goal scoring, offensive creativity. He's NHL ready, similar to Owen Nolan, and he's guaranteed medium elite. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and pick this guy. I'm not going to bother trading up. Uh, first pick is going to be Atu Ratti. He's 76 overall, high elite to the Minnesota Wild. Because if I did want to trade up to Nashville's third pick, I'm not going to get uh, Trevor Wong at five, I don't think. So if I wanted to trade up, I'd give them my first round pick. Uh, do they want Linus Allmark? They don't. Could I give them Linus Allmark? That would be pretty much my offer. Uh, if they accept this, I'll do it. No, not where I need to be in what I'm offering. You know what, but I don't even really want to do it deep down because I don't. I know I don't need a centerman. So pick number two, Trevor Wong. Wow, he goes as high as number two to the Islanders. Wow, okay, that's big. Number two, Trevor Wong. So now that's, that's something else now because now at pick number three is Chase Miura. And Chase Miura is a monster, six foot four winger, 111 points. Two-way forward, size and skill, puck protection, size and strength, similar to Tarasenko, and he's NHL ready. He just dropped to number three, and the Predators do want to trade that pick. So now I do want to get that third overall pick, but I only have about a minute to get it done if I want to do it. So if I could trade you Linus Allmark. I was looking at some other tradable pieces, maybe Kopaka. That would probably be my offer. Would Nashville want to do this? Trade rejected, we're saving salary. So that is a good deal. They just want to save salary. If I sweeten it with uh, a fourth round pick, would that do anything for you? Trade rejected, ah, it's because they want to save cap space. Matt Irwin has one year left at 1 million. Oh, here, right here. Nick Benino, one year left at 4.1. Could I take these guys back 
and give you a third. What do you say? Trade rejected still. I want to give them my second. Trade rejected. Okay, my final offer. I'll throw in the 85th. Final offer for the third overall pick. Okay. Couldn't get it done. Sorry, boys. Couldn't get it done. Chase Mira. They, they say they want to trade their pick, but I guess not. So Chase Mira, 81 overall, medium elite. He could have been the first overall pick. Medium elite, 81 overall. What a monster. Ah, what an absolute disgust. Sillinger goes to fourth overall. That's interesting. So now who's left here at pick number five? It's Lindstrom, who is a two-way forward, right wing, goal scoring, pro release, magic hands. Similar to Michel Goulet. All right. NHL ready. He's, uh, he was projected to go third. Now we're at five. So maybe I could trade up for him. It shouldn't take much moving up from five to six. If I throw in a third, how close does it get? You're a bit off in value. Would a fourth and a fifth make it go through here? I think that would trade accepted. All right, so that is trade accepted. Thank you very much, Washington. I will now pick at number five, and I will take this guy who is guaranteed medium lead. Helmerson looks great as well, but this guy is ranked third, and he's ranked eighth, so I think I'm going to go for Mats Lindstrom, right winger from... They're both playing in the SHL. This guy, he played on Malgom. He, oh, he played on... Malmo, this guy plays on some crazy name. So from the SHL, Jurgarden Hockey, the Anaheim Ducks are pleased to select Mats Lindstrom. Welcome to the Anaheim Ducks. 77 overall, medium elite sniper. That's what I like to see. That is what I like to see. So the Capitals go ahead and take Leroux. Devils go ahead and take Roy. Man, is this guy going to drop even more? Helmerson's going to be at number 8, right? Yeah, Helmerson has to go at 8. Imagine if I could trade up and also get Helmerson, though. What if I could trade up and get Helmerson? Now, that would be a buzz. Because I don't really want those guys who are projected to go later. I could give you the 18th overall pick. Could I give you Linus Allmark and then that other Kopaka as well? That should go through. The value's in my favor. Let me just put a pick on the other side to balance it in case it goes through right away. A couple of fifths. Winnipeg, what do you say? Trade accepted. Thank you, Winnipeg. So you take Kopaka, who was not a huge pro uh, prospect for us. Allmark, who I didn't want backing us up anymore. And then because of all the way the draft has been going, I will pick at eighth. I will take the other suite on, my, on uh, the draft board. Jesper Helmerson from the Malmo Redhawks. Welcome to Anaheim. An 80 overall medium lead forward who is... Uh, left wing, two way forward, 80, 80 overall. I am loving it. These guys are all 70s. I just can't believe Chase Miura dropping to three. I'm buzzing. Mats Lindstrom and Jesper Helmerson, left and right wing. Could be a Swedish connection on that top line someday. So, very nice, boys. I'm very happy to see that. Uh, our next pick does not come until round number two. Uh, pick number 18 in round number two. So, I think I'm going to sim the rest of the round. We'll see who else went in the first round after uh, Helmerson. Clefbaum goes, medium elite defenseman. Harrison, 73. Lambos, medium elite. Chaika, high top nines. That's hits a bunch of high top nines. Checking the draft class here. No one really that I would like at the top here. Medium top four D, Francisco MacArthur. Defensive defenseman, six foot. Mm, not going to stretch for him. Uh, now, I'd be picking around here. No one of interest, really. I think I'm just going to simulate to my pick and see who's there at pick 49. MacArthur, Rolo goes, the Rolo man. Medium top nine, he goes. Uh, MacArthur, he was medium top 4D, 63 overall, 17 years old. Okay, that's a pretty good pick. Got to give it to them. Is this Mats Franzen? No, it's Mikael Franzen. Mats Franzen was a, was a legend in our Brooklyn Bellow franchise mode. So here at round two, pick 18, 49th overall. Uh, there's Tristan Waugh, who is six foot one. Uh, boss, this is a right winger. Then you have Brennan Othman, who's possibly medium top six, a sniper. Scouts have him at 50. Our scouts have J.R. Avon at 48. Only one bar medium lead though, so I don't really trust it. That's the issue. I can take this guaranteed low top 4D, Adrian Wilm, who's ranked at 57. 
or I could say actually Brand Clark. I had pinned Brand Clark because many people talk about Brand Clark in other franchise modes about how good he can get. So I was thinking about getting Brand Clark thanks to the uh, advanced scouting that I've done in other franchise modes. So I might trade down from 49 to like 55 because I'm not totally sold on these guys' guarantees. I think I will do that. I'm gonna go 49, so 50, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna see if the Coyotes wanna trade me their pick and I'll take that defenseman there. So see if they wanna give me a fourth and a fifth next year to make it happen, and they do, thank you very much. Stock up on the draft for next season. The Coyotes take a medium top nine forward. Canucks take a medium top nine forward was Tristan Waugh. Othman was medium top nine. Avon was medium top nine. Grossman low top six. And then, uh, no, I don't, want to, I don't want to do that. Wilm was low top 4D, but I'm happy to take Brand Clark with my pick. I think he might be elite, medium elite, something like that. Brand Clark, six foot two defenseman. He might be an offensive defenseman from the OHL. And yes, he is 55 overall, medium elite. He is 18 years old, and he is a two way defenseman who has uh, some possibly some good stats down the road. So we'll see what uh, the stars have to say about him. Uh, simulate to pick 63 now. Pick number one of round number three. The second round ended uh, without anything too crazy, I don't think. No, it doesn't look like it. So let's go make our pick at 63rd overall. I think it's uh, no question. Definitely going to take Maximilian Setzinger, a medium elite grinder. Definitely, yeah, I got to take him. Yeah, you just have to, no question. Maximilian. Welcome to Anaheim from the Dell, a monster. He is 72 overall, medium elite grinder. Okay, 19 years old, that's why the overall is so high. But I'll take that potential. All right, why not? Next pick is pick 99. Looks like we're getting a bit dry on the, uh, on the type of players that we got around. Avery Hayes is possibly low elite, not super convinced. Um... I think I'm going to have to go ahead and take this low top 4D potentially. Magnus Dralmerson. I'm just going international today, huh? His NHL ETA is pretty far. Playing in an A-plus league, he did all right. I'll probably take him. Colton Dock, brother of Kirby Dock, I believe. Any goalies that I want to be looking at? Not really. Maybe this guy, Trent Allison, down the road. No, this guy might be high starter. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take um, 58 overall, low top 6D, 17 years old. So I'm happy with that. I'll take it. Sim to pick 105. Just a few picks later now. I guess I'll try this guy, Xander Hoyles. He looks like he's a grinder, but he might have the potential. So we always like having guys who have potential because you never know what that might be for trade value and all that. So Xander Hoyles, he is low elite, a 60 overall grinder. Okay, the scouts found him. Uh, I don't think there's anyone I really want with this pick. So I might just trade it. Yeah, I got a bunch of picks here. So I think I'll trade this fourth. I'm gonna trade one of my fifths and one of my sixths as well because it's just too many picks. All right, so I'll just take a fourth and a sixth next year. Trade accepted, sweet proposal for us. Thank you very much, LA. That pick turned into an AHL medium top six forward. Pick 130 now. No one too crazy. Tristan Robbins might be medium top nine. Looks like our best bet. Uh, Benjamin Goudreau didn't play at all, so I won't risk drafting him. Guaranteed low top nine forward. Or I can take a bet on this guy who is possibly medium top nine forward. Let's go. I didn't, I didn't draft any centers, so I wouldn't mind some uh, AHL depth. Uh, he's medium bottom six, 60 overall. All right, not bad. Uh, 138th overall. Nope, won't trade it. Now I'll take this guy who's guaranteed low uh, top nine forward, Robbie Zjarventi. That was him all along, I believe. Guaranteed low top nine, 61 overall. Pick 173 now in round number six. Uh, this guy is possibly medium fringe starter, Joel Blomqvist. A very international draft today. Kozlov, this guy is possibly medium top 6D, so I'll go ahead and draft him. He looks like he's pretty con uh, pretty confirmed. He is medium 7th D. Bah. Win some, you lose some. Round 7, pick 7. Just going for whoever has highest potential probably by now. Uh, Maxim Alexandrov I could take. Charlie Defonseca looks cool as well, actually. 
He had some decent stats. Why not? It's a cool name. Let's draft him. He is AHL top six, medium. Then we sim to pick 206, which I believe is our last pick in this draft. Uh, this guy's possibly low elite, Tommy Yasu. So we'll go for him. And he is low top six, but 49 overall. So that's it. So that is the end of the draft, boys and girls. Pretty happy with how that turned out, especially with Lindstrom and Helmerson picking fifth and eighth, really establishing ourselves as a force to be reckoned with down the road in the NHL. Arizona made a trade first with Columbus. Okay. Now we come to the re-sign phase. So I'm going to quickly look. The following coaches have expired. Okay, so I'm going to deal with my coaches, and then I'm going to come back in a second. So I sent offers to all the coaches, uh, gave them way more money than they wanted, so they should re-sign. The following scouts have expiring contracts on my team. Okay, I'm going to go re-sign my scouts. That's done. I offer them all contracts, but all these guys who are C, I'm probably just going to fire a bunch of them if better ones are available. And that's it for that. Now we come into the re-sign phase. Let's see what kind of money people want. We have $40.45 million of cap space. So it shouldn't be an issue. It's just we're thinking about the long term. So Sam Steele, highest point scorer on our team this past season, 85 overall. He wants 6.3 for four years. If we go up to eight, it goes into the sevens. Uh, going lower than that brings it down to 5.8. Not much of a difference. He does want the extension, which means I can lowball him a little bit. Maybe I'll offer him five years at 6.250. Let's see if he'll take that for five years. Sunny Milano is now 84 overall. He wants about 5 million, and it stays the same no matter what you offer. He does want the extension. Um, when he expires, he'll be a UFA if I give him three years. So if I give him two years, he'll be an RFA, which I'd prefer. So I'll give him two years at 4.725. How about that? Max Comtois, winner of the Calder Trophy this past season. Um, pretty fair contract that he's looking for. Doesn't go up too much. I would offer him two years at 2.2. How about that? That would be a pretty good contract for me. Ryan Getzlaff, definitely have to re-sign our captain. Uh, I'm willing to give him one year at 4 million. See if he likes that. Josh Mahura wants $4 million as an 82 overall. So that's a bit of a buzz. I'd rather give him two years at 3.450. That's more of a contract I'd be comfortable with. Gooley is 80 overall. He wants 1.7. That's fair. Uh, I wouldn't mind giving him maybe three, even four years at that same price since he wants the extension. Lundstrom is 80 overall, 21 years old. Goes up if I start asking him for more than that. So if I can just get him one year, 5.5. Max Jones, he hopefully will start to grow a little bit. Uh, if I could give him three years at 1.050, that would be cool. Yanni Rukula was a good defensive defenseman for depth, but he wants a one-way deal. That's the issue. So I'll probably just let him walk. And uh, if I need him, I'll find him again. Jakob Persson has been a good defenseman in our system. He wants a one-way deal, though. I'll have to come back to that. Sherwood led, our, led the San Diego in scoring, I believe. David Backes. I would, I would like to give him a one-year deal and try and get him a Stanley Cup. I give him one year, 0 0.95 on one way. See if I can get him. He would just be a healthy scratch pretty much most of the time. Barbero I release. Erica Branson I release after that huge contract. Zach Redman I'll release. Uh, Carter Rowney I would like to re-sign. He wants a two-way deal. Perfect. DeLeo I'd like to re-sign. Great. Agazino played well in the minors. Sign him. England. Uh, come back to it. I'm just gonna, I'll do that and then I'll simulate a day and see what people are saying. Anthony Stolarz I might... Yeah, he wasn't the worst. But I need to see... I need to check out my goaltending depth and see if I actually need him or not. So I'll advance a day, see what all the coaches and scouts and... Everybody says, uh, Finley, I'm not, in <laughs> I'm not thrilled with the role you have offered, but after mulling it over, I accept. Wes Finley, you've been my NHL head coach for two years. Would you like a four-year contract to keep being an NHL head coach? Well, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not thrilled with you offering me the role of head coach, but I've thought about it and I'll accept it. You're a piece of junk, man. Same thing with this guy. He accepts. And this guy's happy. All right. Thanks, Darren Martinez. 
David Baca is a signs, very happy to see that. Getzlaff signs, Sherwood signs, uh, Agazino rejects, okay. Uh, Guli wants more money, Rowney says yes, Milano says yes, Steele wants more money, Jones wants more money, DeLeo yes, Mahura yes, Comtois yes, Lundstrom yes, okay, and making profit. We still have $27.2 million to spend, so no problem there. I tried to get Steele at five years at six point whatever, so if I could just get him 6.5 for five years, or do I just, you know what, I don't want to get him to UFA, I'll keep him four years, which brings him to, to RFA, and I'll give him four years at 6.250, I think that's a little bit better. Guli, I'm going to give him more what he wants at two years, bring it down to 1.575, Max Jones offered him too long I think, so I think I'll just, I'll give him what he wants, two years at 1 million. I guess, you know, I'll let walk because that's what he wants. Uh, England, he, even, he didn't play much for us even. Low top 60 potential, no, I'll probably just let him walk. I found him in free agency anyways, so I'll just release him. Uh, Sideroff, I will sign. Sorensen, I will sign. Drew, I will sign. And Hill, I will also sign, who has been growing well. He was a 6th round pick in 2019 by the Ducks, and we he has grown to a 66 overall now, so good for him. Uh, Stolarz in San Diego put up pretty good numbers, 28, 13, and 4. So I guess, you know, I'll give him the I'll give him that one-year contract, and if he wants it, he can take it. And we'll see what ends up happening when the season comes around, if he still has that spot or not. Jakob Person, if I could give him one year, one mil. I like having him on the team. Uh, Weidman... Bah, I don't know if he, he, he's even going to play with all the defensemen coming up in the system. I did release some D. So, you know, I'll give him the, the league minimum there. Sam Carrick, he put up 33 points in 68 games. He's 29 years old. Nothing special, really. I think I'm just going to release him. Reed Duke, I will resign. And if everyone signs, then that'll be it. Now all the scouts are telling me yes. Go through these. So Gooley accepts, Steele accepts, Jones accepts, Duke accepts, Stolars doesn't want that dollar value, neither does Weidman. Sideroff, Drew, Person, Hill, Sorensen all say yes. So I don't know why those guys would say no at that dollar value, and that's when they what they wanted in the first place. I want to see as well uh, my unsigned players. Who has who is unsigned? Okay, so Helmerson definitely got to sign him, 80 overall. Give him his entry-level deal. He could play in the NHL right away. Lindstrom, I will sign. He can also play in the NHL or AHL. And Prick, Prick Real, I will sign him as well. He can be NHL. He can be AHL for sure. And Setzinger, I'm not sure if I'll sign him or let him play another year in the Dell. Um, I'll, I think I'll sign him. He'll he'll do well in San Diego. Give him a lot of time down there. The rest of the guys will probably just wait on them. Weidman's my only forward, uh, only my only skater who didn't want the extension. Uh, Two-way, I'll give him 800k. I'll do the same thing for Stolars. Uh, so more scouts saying yes. Uh, Helmerson, Stolars, Weidman, Lindstrom, everybody is there. Okay, so that's it, boys. We are now ready to hop into free agency. So I'm in advance a couple of days, and before I do that, I'm just going to go check out the scouts and the coaches. So give me a moment to do that. So I sent out an offer to seven different scouts. I fired seven and sent out offers to seven. I sent out an offer to a coach to be our goalie coach. His specialty is defensemen, not goalies. But I don't know how the system really works. Now I'm thinking Wes Finley. He's an overall A head coach. He's a generalist. Uh, actually, his style is balanced. He has only a C for teaching, which I don't really like. His team fit is currently at a 61%, but not all the team is there because they're like in the minors and stuff like that. If you go to hire coaches, you have this guy right here, um, Gregory Pecker, A- minus for teaching. He has a... What am I saying, Pecker? It's this guy, Gilbert Hull, Gilbert Hull, Franges Bello. He has a 64% team fit. His style is offensive. His teaching is B. So I get, yeah, not as good as the other guy, but coach influence, power play, deep offense, all A+. And Gilbert Hull, I like him, man. He has one Stanley Cup. He has one President's Trophy. So he's won before. 64% team fit. He's, um, he's an offensive type coach. So I think I'm going to interview him 
and see what he says. I have never done a coach interview, I don't think. Uh, what do you think about the organization, Bello? Uh, he works for me. I would like to chat about the team status and its importance to me. Okay. What type of organization do you like? Uh, I'm all about looking to the future and developing good talent. I love coaching rebuilders. Well, that's us. Okay, that's good. Uh, what about the contracts? What do you want to see? You want to have this for my contract? Okay. I think that's all I need to see. He seems to like the team. Do I take the risk and fire Wes Findlay? Do I, my team status is rebuilder. I think I will. I think I will. Wes Finley, you disrespected me when I rehired you, and it's over, boys. Wesley Finley fired as head coach of the Anaheim Ducks. Big news, shockwaves through the NHL, and now Gilbert Hull, I will offer you the contract to be head coach of my team. He has better teaching, the C for Finley, the B for Hull, A plus for coach influence, where Hull Lax is the uh, penalty kill, but I'd rather have uh, a coach that can uh, do well with the young guys. So I'll offer him a, like five million. That's what Finley was making. I'll offer him five million for five years. Unfortunately, I need to cheat the system like this and offer him a ton of money because it's such a broken system. But I guess that's just life. So those contracts are he are sent out. Shockwaves through the NHL. And now we can check out free... Actually, I need to see who's on my team and then what do we target in free agency. So forwards, let's look right away at our forwards. Center, one, two, three, four, five. So first line center probably is Sam Steele. Henrik, that could be interchangeable. Getzloff probably a third line center, right? He'll even drop a little bit more. Lundstrom could be fourth line center. Who knows what happens between these guys? Back as is depth. So that's that. Second, the left wings are all figured out. That's already done. Right wingers figured out as well. First line. Now Tippett could place third line. And Comtois could play second line. Helmerson third line. So Comtois could play second line right wing. Helmerson third line left wing. And then Tippett fourth line right wing. If I could use maybe a fourth line right winger perhaps. Defense one, two, three, four, five, six. No problems there, I don't think. Plus, people are going to grow. I'm not going to touch defense. I just need possibly a fourth line right winger and a backup goalie is what I need here in free agency. So let's see who is a free agent. David Krejci, Nick Foligno, Thomas Tatar. Kovalchuk up to an 85 overall. Man, what a monster. So let's sort by overall. Okay, there are some people out here. Not a crazy year for uh, free agency. Let me sort by UFAs. Anyone with potential? This guy's low top six. Sorella. Anti Sorella. Low top six? Why not? I'll offer him a contract. Why not, Bello? Give you uh, an entry level deal. I have uh, 44 contract spots, so not a big deal. Uh, now goalies. Let's see goalies. All goalies sorting by overall. Frederick Anderson, Thomas Rask, Philip Grubauer, 89 overall. That's crazy. Looking for a backup though. So starting from Tristan Jerry. No, I want UFAs. UFAs who are listed as backups. So Peter Maracic is an option. Big Pete, Aaron Dell, Ryan Miller, 40 years old. He wants the cup. He went 18, 13, and 2 last year. Oh man, I would love to get Ryan Miller. But would he be the best option? I don't know. You know, Elvis Mers Lincolns is here. You say Saros is here. There might be better options. Like I could get a guy who's 14 years younger and has starter potential, and you say Saros over uh, over Ryan Miller. Saros had a uh, not a great year in the minors. Mrachik does only want 1.625 as an 83 overall, which is very nice. Uh, he went 7-5-0 and in Carolina last year. Not the greatest numbers, but still, 83 overall is 83 overall. I would love to get Ryan Miller for a run at the Cup, but even, you know, by the time the season rolls around, he might be 79 overall or 80 overall. That's what I don't trust. I think I'm going to definitely go with Peter Mrachik. It's just the wise option, I think, for right now. So I will offer him the two years that he wants. I'll offer him uh, 1.850, less than um, Allmark was making, so not a big deal. 
1.8, there you go. Now we go to right wingers, see if I can get a fourth line right winger if there's anybody. Uh, to be honest, th this person that I signed may end up playing in the AHL because it depends how everybody grows. Uh, even Mikhaev could be a fourth line guy, he's a two way forward. Someone who's good defensively. Jason Pominville is still around, how did he do last year? He had 17 goals, 16 assists with Buffalo, went back to Buffalo. Yoel Armia is a monster, love him. Ryan Hartman has that medium top nine potential. He is a two-way forward, decent defense. I can get someone better than that though. I think I'm looking at more the uh, the Lievo Calvert type of option. Josh Lievo, two-way forward, three and a half star defense, which I like. Matt Calvert is a sniper. Not sure if I need that on the fourth line. Uh, I, I think I like Josh Lievo, but I don't like the, the price tag of 2.6. For a guy who's going to play fourth line, not a big fan of that 2.6 million. Because then this guy who's also 80 overall wants a whole million dollars less. So let's say I start sorting like this. Armia wouldn't be a bad option. He's a big boy, six foot three. I really do like Yoel Armia in the real world as well. So I think I will get Armia. Guy's a monster. If he doesn't play, he doesn't play. But I'm going to offer him a contract and see what he says. If it doesn't work out, then I think I don't think I'll be hard pressed to find anybody else. You know, it's a fourth line right winger, it's not a big deal. So now the question is, will those coaches and agents sign? Third and a fourth, I will decline. Coaches, agents, and Peter Muracic. Uh, okay, that scout signs, which is nice. That scout signs. There are seven scouts, I believe. Mario Moro didn't want the con. Okay, I offered him I think two years instead of three. Okay. Uh, Ye the Leonov, Dmitry Leonov accepts as the goalie coach. Thank you for a generous financial compensation. Is um, Ul going to sign? Let me just also go get a QMJHL scout. Uh, Moro won five years, which I didn't want to give him. So I guess I guess I'll get this guy Kemp, who I think I just fired as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just fired this guy. Three other teams are interested by him. Uh, Fifteen teams are interested in Moro. Wow. But I'll go for a day out of name. This guy's French. He must know the, the QMJHL pretty well, right? Give so him. simulate another day. Come on. Where's that guy? Bernard St. Louis accepts. Jean Robida accepts. Audrey Murata accepts. Sergei Koltsov accepts. Gilbert Hull, our new head coach. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Anaheim Ducks, my friend. Sorella accepts the offer. Now I'm just waiting for Muratsik. And he accepts the offer. Thank you very much, Peter. And so does Yoel Armia. You love to see it. So setting the trade block for the off season. I, I forgot about Quinton Byfield as well. He'll probably be in the NHL next season, unless he goes uh, in the AHL. But I think he'll be there. Uh, only guy I want to put on the block maybe is Jakob Silverberg. See if I get any options. Once again, just out of curiosity not out of desire to trade. So that'll be the block, nothing special, just to simulate through the off season. So that's gonna be it for that. Let's simulate to next year and see what we're looking at. A third or fourth in person for a second, I'm gonna decline that. It's probably about, gonna be an offer that I get very often throughout the off season. I'm not, I'm not gonna show all the trades that I get offered. Uh, second, a third in prospect for Chris Kreider and Artem Anisimov, interesting. I'm not going to show every offer I get unless it's something that I'm really considering. Sheesh, two firsts and a prospect for Chris Tanev and a third. Tanner Pearson also got traded for a first just before that. So a lot of deals going on here in the off season. I've rejected a lot of them. So Ilya Kovalchuk gets signed by Montreal and they trade him a fourth and a sixth to St. Louis for a first, a third, and a prospect. Yeah, then the game gets mad at me when I trade guys that I just signed. Then they trade, they capitalize on an old guy who has high overall, and they get a first and a third round pick. That's garbage. So here we are at the beginning of the season. Uh, captain remains Adam Adam Henry. Captain remains Ryan Getzlaff, and then alternate re remains uh, Cam Fowler. But without Ryan Kessler on the team, I think the other ace should go to Adam Henrik. Makes sense. The computer gave it to him already. I've given it to Jakob Silverberg in the past, but I haven't been impressed with him. So I think I'm going to keep it just like that. Now let's check out the lines. Before I do that, I do the roster moves and make sure we see who is going to play where. So forwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, so Armia or Sherwood will probably just be a healthy scratch. Uh, actually, Bacchus will probably be a healthy scratch. I'm going to call him up as well. 
in the system there. Byfield's only a 77. That's surprising. So hopefully he blows up soon. Uh, pfft, pfft, defense, defense, defense. One, two, three, four, five, six. So person will go in the. I don't know. He'll stay up his depth. And then in the system, yeah, Vili Hinola still hasn't budged past 77. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then goalies, it's Dostal who's going to be the new starter with Stolars backing him up. And Gibson with Mirachik. Okay. So the lines kind of look like this, but I'm going to move things around and see what I can do to try to get the most out of the lines with the pluses and all that. So let me work on that for a little bit. So here's the issue that I'm running into here. I can either play with Adam Henrique as a third line center and my top six all get plus threes, or I can play Adam Henrique as my first line center and every line gets a plus one and line number two gets a plus three as well. Helmerson, he is a left wing, and, but he's listed as a fourth line forward, and he actually has 80 face-offs, so he could, he's a very viable centerman, so he'll be my fourth line center for this year. Comtois, I don't like Comtois and Tippett, both on the third line, 83 overalls, but I guess that's just how it's going to go. Milano uh, gets laugh up here. Sam Steele, he has 79 face-offs, the lowest of all the centermen. And I don't want to play Getzlaff third line center because then Lundstrom goes fourth line center. It's just a domino effect from there. Because if Steele goes here, Henrik goes here, Getzlaff goes here. Then Lundstrom, if he goes on the wing, then he's a fourth line winger instead. But I don't want him down there. Defense, I can play like this, where it's a plus one for the top pair and then plus three for the second and third pair. But these guys aren't really second pair. It's supposed to be like this, really. These guys are second pair defensemen. These guys are third pair defensemen. And that gives them plus one, plus one. Going like this makes it plus three, plus three. So I guess I'll scan the system and do that. If I were to put Hampus Lindholm on the third pair, it gives plus threes to everyone. But I can't make my best defenseman play third pair minutes. Uh, offense, I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna leave it like this to begin the season. If you'd like to see me go plus three, plus three for the top six by putting Adam Henrique on the third line, let me know. Um, I could put Henrique on the third line. Could Getzlaff? No. So I would have to put Henrique on the third line. Let me know your thoughts on that. Defense will look like how I just showed you. Uh, and the scratches on forward will be Armia and Bacchus. Person is the scratch on defense. Special teams now. Try them like this. Putting Comtois and Steel like this gives both lines a plus one instead of just one line a plus one. So I'll try Steel on the second pairing with Silverberg and Henrique. or Kel Getzlaff, Comtois up here. Tip it at the point. Helmerson will go at the point over here. I want to give him some playing time, not just fourth line minutes. I'd like to get him going medium lead forward. You know, I'd like to get as much out of him as possible. Penalty kill. I'm going to try this as the penalty kill. It's not the best second pair, but putting these guys as the first pair gives them a plus three, which could be very helpful. Putting Milano down here. Uh, actually, this wouldn't be worse. This wouldn't be bad. Yeah, actually, I will do this. Henrik and Sherwood, which is a strong pair. And then Milano and Getzlaff get a plus one. I'll try that out. I didn't. I don't really want to give Sherwood a ton of ice time. I don't need to. But it seems to work out if I do do that. Helmerson, I'm not going to put him there as a negative two. Uh, if anyone fits negative three, my goodness. Getzlaff's... Uh, that's because Henrik's a, a... Whatever. Okay, that gives it zeros. Okay, that balances out everything there. Great. Very big process to just make some lines work over here. Three on three, great, great, great. Okay, goalies, Gibson and Maratsik. Scratched look like that. Okay, we did it, boys. That Those will be the lines. Helmerson gets his extra ice time by being on the power play. And now I'm just gonna look at the minor league lines here and all the pluses and minuses to go there. Quick comment here, I'm going to sign Gooley, Kevin Gooley, uh, Caden Gooley to his entry-level deal right away to put him into the lineup. I'm also going to fire my coach, I think, in the AHL because the way that he likes the lines or whatever is just garbage. I try to put anyone anywhere, negatives, negatives, negatives. He is just not happy with anything. My top players trying to put them on the line and he just doesn't, he's just not going to have it. So I need someone who's going to like my top players. I can't have someone, look on the side, all dashes and X's. I can't have someone who doesn't like my top players like that. So I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to fire my coach. His, uh, I'll see what his team fit is. Coaching staff. 
Thorburn is a B minus. His team fit is 54%. Look at the Gruel, Prickteal, Lindstrom just down on everybody there. Just the team fit doesn't work. And then if I go to higher coach, any AHL head coaches, West Finley still hasn't found a job. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, Kalanos. This guy, Brett Kolanos, his team fit is 57%, much higher on our on our uh, forwards there. Not as high on Weidman, Hinola, but he's much higher on those guys. I don't know. I wouldn't mind hiring him. I think I will. What the heck? Thorburn, you're fired. Bang. Now I have to fill the head coach? Is that it? Why, why is it forcing me to fill the head coach? Okay, congrats. You're the head coach. I just promoted you. But now we need to hire an actual head coach. So AHL head coach, Kolanos, AHL head coach, three years. I'll give you a million bucks. Okay, he's back to associate coach. Why do I have to have someone fill in as, as a, my head coach? It won't, it, I'm trying to hire a head coach. If I hire someone as head coach, but that, it doesn't work. Uh, this system doesn't make sense, man. But I'm going to start simulating a little bit. Now that all that is taken care of, I just need to figure out the head coach and the minors. San Diego Gulls have fired their head coach. Yep. But the role you have is already filled. That's why it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So I need to go hire that guy. I need to go to hire coach. And I need to hire him as an associate coach. And then promote him to head coach. Is that what I need to do? But I need to hope that he accepts my offer as an associate coach. Come on. Now I need to offer him all kinds of money. Hopefully he'll accept. Giving him the max possible contract that I can give him to be my associate coach. And then I'll promote him to head coach. Sheesh, man. Anyways, let's start simulating through the preseason in Anaheim. First game we win 5-2. to two. Sam Steele three points. Okay, Colano signs. Now I can fix around the coaching staff. Ah, such a buzz. Now I need to fire this guy. I need to fire uh, Kovosari. I need to promote this guy to head coach, which is what I wanted to do all along. And then now I need to go fire. I need to go hire another associate coach in the AHL because now I'm missing an AHL associate coach. Uh, they're all C minus. Whatever. This guy seems to be ranked the highest, so I'll just go ahead and hire him. What a massive buzz, man. All for no reason. This doesn't need to happen, but the EA system does it. Colanos, his team fit now is 57%, whatever. Let me go uh, fix up the minor league lines. Uh, now those exact same lines give these guys a plus one. So that's just the way it goes, I guess. It's, uh, it's a pretty massive buzz. He hates Weidman, so I guess I'm gonna get rid of Weidman. Ah, uh, Gooley, I forgot. Gooley and uh, Byfield are both still in the minors. Can't get either of those guys. So what I need to do is trade for somebody who like who fits this coach's system. Deloria doesn't fit the system. But if I could just uh, get uh, Stetzer. It's because Stetzer is a grinder. And then Deloria is also a grinder. So two grinders together don't really work. Deloria just doesn't work in the minors. I'm going to call up Deloria to be depth. I'm going to go sign someone for the minors. And I'm going to trade for a better defenseman for the top pair. Actually, I could just go sign a better top pair defenseman. What a buzz this has been. So Chris Weidman, he's old. The coach doesn't like him. Just ship him off to Ottawa for a seventh round pick. No problem. Couldn't care less. And now I sent some uh, contracts out to some guys. So let's see what they say to them. Advance another few days. San Diego Gulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that stuff with the coaching debacle. We lost to the Flames. Uh, wow. John Klingberg and a third round pick to the Buffalo Sabres for a prospect and a first round pick. Sheesh. Uh, I don't feel the quality of the roster matches the, just the challenges I'm looking for. All right, Bellow. Whatever you say. Okay. Timo L Taylor Lyre, Reed, Reed Boucher, Julius Bergman all sign. So now it's San Diego can start to look a little bit better. For the second half of the preseason, I want to try out that thing I was talking about with the plus threes on top on the top lines there. So I'm going to see if that has anything that uh, any sort of effect on the preseason simulation as we take on the next few games. LA Kings, we beat them 4-2 to two with that new change. Edmonton Oilers, we lose 6-2. to two. That didn't work out so well. Mirko Mueller accepts his contract. Brooklyn Bellow Legend, who I signed for San Diego. So I'm going to change that back like this. 
AHL will look like this. Armia is going to be in the minors. Left, rest of the lines are like that. Defense going to look like this. Plus ones all around. Goalies, Dostal with Stolars backing him up. Scratches like this. Big buzz, but I finally got to the end of that. Vili Hanola hasn't been progressing very well. If he doesn't do anything after this, like if he's not ready to go next season, probably going to look to trade him. Still need a coach in uh, San Diego, an associate coach. This guy has 62% team fit, so I'm going to see if I can just get him to be associate coach. And that'll be the end of that nightmare in my life. Last couple games of preseason with the lines fixed up a little better. Let's see if the changes anything. We win 3-2 to two in a shootout. This guy finally joins the team, Randy Wakabayashi. He's on the team. And then Vegas, Golden Knights, who are 2-4-0. We lose 4-2. to two. So we went 3-3-1 three, three, and one in the preseason. Nothing too crazy. Six points in seven games from Ryan Getzlaff. Six from Steele, six from Comtois, five from Raquel. Nothing too crazy, but the preseason is never really a good predictor of anything, so I'm not going to fret. So all that finally done, we can advance to the regular season. I can send out the scouts, and we can begin simulating uh, the beginning of the 2021-2022 regular season in the next episode. So, boys, what a roller coaster it's been. Thank you if you are new to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'm looking to, to, to put out content of whatever you want to see. Old school RuneScape, Club Penguin, whatever you want. So leave it in the comments. Let me know what you like. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.